We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Hillsboro, Kansas, as we get to visit with the head football coach of the Tabor Blue Jays, Coach Mike Gardner, heading into his 17th season with the program. Coach, let's talk about last year just a little bit to, to get us up to speed. Three and eight last season. A couple of good wins, though, including a, a homecoming win over Bethel to get things going. And then the season finale, a win over Ottawa, who proved to be a playoff team coming out of the division. Talk a little bit about last season, please. Well, last year was last year was unique for us. Uh, you know, obviously, you talked about the split divisions and things like that. So the first part of the year we played against the Kessinger division, and the second part of the year we played against the Bissell division. And we we really struggled early. Uh, made a quarterback change halfway through, and uh, you know Willie Green was our QB who ended the season. He's the one we went with. He had a really good spring. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing what he can do as we move forward, you know, and going winning three out of our last six ball games uh, to finish the year uh, really gave us it gave us a little bit of momentum going into spring. We I felt like we had a great spring. Uh, kids did a good job in the weight room. Um, you know, we made a couple moves from QB to wide receiver. We moved Tyson Dozier and we moved Glenn Maiden Jr. over to wide receiver. So. Um, you know, get an opportunity there to kind of figure out how we're going to get them in the mix with some of our other guys we have returning. Um, you know, we've recruited a couple tight ends. Our backfield, I think, is going to be solid. You know, Moises Haynes is really an underrated guy. I mean, you know, we had uh, during the COVID season, we had Andre Renteria. He was a thousand yard rusher for us. And we were not great in terms of offensive production, but we still had a kid that went over a thousand yards and he was selected to play in the senior, um, the senior bowl, the NAI senior classic um, in 21 then. And, and uh, you know, we had uh, Dravion Cooper who was an all American in his own right, but we have not had a thousand yard rusher for a while, you know, and, and um, so I feel like we're going to be stronger there. We've also had some guys that, that we're excited about looking at in camp and, you know, and so we'll just kind of go from there and see how, it, see how it rides. So it's kind of game, an opportunity to get to see how some of the shifts were made. You talked about Willie Green really took over last season, right uh, about the Bethel game, maybe the game prior Bethel game kind of found a rhythm and, and uh, got picked up the win there and, and led the way for the team. He comes back at quarterback. You talked about those shifts there. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your offense, and I know it does begin up front. You know, Ian Quaring's back. He he battled some injuries and things like that. You know, to to get himself back, and and Dirk Smalls, who's one of our offensive guards, and so you know we've signed some guys that I'm excited about seeing how they're going to come in here and compete, and um, you know we'll just kind of see how it see how it goes. But we we've got to do a better job. We got to do a better job of running the football. Um, you know, we went to more of a controlled passing game toward the second half of the season that actually fit our personnel pretty well. Willie did a decent job of managing it. But, um, you know, like like, I said, like you said, everything starts with up front with us, and, you know, we just got to do a better job of protecting the QB and, and uh, trying to run the ball when we need to rather than run the ball and hope. But Moises Haynes, our running back, I think he's one of the most more underrated guys um, – that we have on our whole roster, you know, the kid works extraordinarily hard and, and, um, you know, so I'm excited to see how he's going to progress. Coach you mentioned both, uh, Tyson Dozier and, and, um, Glenn Maiden, uh, making the switch there. Tell us a little bit about what that means and, and what it means, not only moving well, position, you had a chance right. to see him in the spring, but what it means for the team. Right. Well, first of all, it's one of the most unselfish things you can do. Um, you know, in a day and age where it's easy to just transfer and go somewhere else. So they decided to stay with the program and um, they made a commitment. We had a long, I had a long talk with both of them about making the switch and, um, you know, their willingness to do that, I think was huge. It speaks to their character. It speaks to their willingness to kind of go. With, it's the right thing to do. But in 2024, it goes against the grain a little bit. You know, when we look at the portal, we look at different situations like that. So um, he, they gained a lot of respect from their from their teammates by doing what they did, and uh, just speaks volumes to who they are as people. I'm really I'm really proud of. Them. 
and they both had really good springs, um, you know, in, in their new roles. So we've got some receivers coming back that I feel like are pretty good, but, it, you know, I think it's going to help. Really do. We're visiting now with Mike Gardner from Tabor here on Midwest Sports Net. We enjoy covering small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help. Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, I know things begin up front there too. You have some players returning in the secondary. Jaden Alexander and Brandon King combined for nine takeaways between just the two of them. You have them coming back on the secondary side and, and some more. Yes. We got, in addition to those two, you know, Jaron Allen's coming back. He, uh, kid that we had that played wide receiver, and then we moved him to corner the middle of last year, and his transition really solidified our secondary. i um, excited about some guys we have coming in, and uh, Coach Hill does a great job getting those guys lined up, getting them prepped for what they're going to see. Um, defensive line-wise, we, we rotated nine kids last year on the D-line. Um, so some of them played better when they're head up. Some of them played better than odd front. Some of them play better than an even front when they're shaded. So, you know, Coach does a good job of figuring out, you know, where our matchups need to be between the opponent's offensive line and our defensive guys. And um, he puts them in a pretty good position to make plays, and it's up to them to do it. You know, we've got to figure out a way to get after the passer with, with less than five guys, though. You know, that's one thing. Once one area that we really struggled with last year, I felt like, was getting after the passer with four and three. And sometimes, you know, you have to be able to do that because if you can do that with four people, it, it doesn't necessarily limit what you do in the secondary. And if you're getting after them with five a lot, you know, you're, you play more or less. You have to play a version of man or – some kind of three deep, three under zone or some variation of that. So, um, you know, uh, but uh, the, the different kind of offensive weapons we have in this conference now, um, it's really changed how you have to play defense. Um, it's just there, there's a lot of speed on the field, and we have to figure out a way to control that. <laughs> I, Coach, while you're on that subject, I imagine you see a lot of different looks with the different teams in the KCAC. Actually, that's a yes/no answer. Um, obviously, Friends does what they do, which is unique in and of itself, and it's a great offense to to have if you got the people to do it. Um, really is. Um, but in terms of a lot of other people in this conference are going more to traditional, you know, styles of offense, um, where they're, you know, they're either gap scheme or they're going to be a zone scheme. They're going to be an RPO scheme. So a lot of what they do is what we kind of see, you know, throughout the year, uh, repeated, you know, repeating itself. You know, they always say that the football is a copycat sport. You know, they, they always talk about that. Everything kind of trickles down. And, um, but, uh, I, I think, what we're seeing more that's unique other than scheme is the ability of the quarterbacks in this conference to make plays. I mean, Southwestern's got them. Kansas Wesleyan's got them. You know, everybody in our conference has a QB. They have a QB that really does a nice job of, of moving their offense. And um, I think it speaks volumes for the conference and, you know, whoever our conference representatives are going to be in the playoffs next year, my hope is that they can pull off a win or two because that's something that, you know, we need to we need to have from our league for us to, you know, get viability with the ratings and things like that. You know, that always helps when you can produce in the postseason. We, we talk about defense, and you do return your leading tackler from last season in Brooks Gardner. And yeah. also, you know, he – you were able to – Find ways to utilize him as well. Uh, long snapper, got national recognition for that. Also on special teams, Nate Heilig uh, had a fantastic season. 10 for 12 field goals, took care of business when he was uh, kicking and, and uh, points after too. Yeah, Nate, Nate has not missed a PAT in two and a half years. So that's really exciting coming in. We haven't had anything blocked. You know, um, hopefully we can keep that going. Uh, Brooks, Brooks does do a good job snapping the football. You know, we had an emergency situation a couple of years ago where we needed him to do it, and he stepped right up and said, I can do it, and 
and he did. And he, the, the, before that, he hadn't snapped since he was in eighth grade. So, you know, it just kind of speaks volumes to him being able to step up and, and, and create a role like that is extraordinarily important. Um, you know, and our, our, our punter did a good job last year, too. You know, we tied the record for most punts inside the 10 uh, for a season. And uh, so I was kind of I was, I was pleased with that. You know, uh, we, we, we punted too much, I'll tell you that. But, uh, you know, I was excited about the fact that we were able to keep people deep. And when we get them pinned deep, you know, our defense does a good job. But but when we do keep people pinned deep, I don't want to see the field position flip because we give up three first downs and then all of a sudden they're punting from midfield. So that kind of negates that. But uh, there's a lot of things we need to work on. Um, I would like to, like, like I said, we were talking about the offense a little bit earlier. I would like to have us be a little bit more consistent with our run game so that we don't try to run the ball and, and we end up having to throw the ball. You know, we need to be able to situation where we, we run the ball where we want to run the ball, when we, when we need to run the ball, as opposed to um, just trying to throw it out there and see what happens. But, uh, but again, you know, um, Willie, going back to that, if you can't run it, you got to throw it. And Willie did a good job of stepping up second half of the season. And uh, we won three out of our last six games. So, um, really, we got some things that I'm excited about. You know, we, we play some teams really, really tough. You know, there's other teams that we just didn't match up well with. So, um, you know, we struggled last year a little bit, but, um, you know, we'll see how, how it goes this year. And I'm excited to get the guys on campus and get to work. Well, Coach, a little bit more than a month and a half before you kick off the season for 2024, similar schedule, just flip the script there. The divisions are the same for this season for the Kessinger and the Bissell as well. And, and it gets underway for you all Saturday, August 31st for week one. And you get to be at home, take on McPherson, and then you go on the road the next week at Evangel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, McPherson's good. They're going to, they're going to they're gonna come in here. They're really sound football program. Um, Obviously, they do a good job coaching their guys, and, um, you know, he'll be prepared for every situation that he's going to see from us, and it's up to us to be able to execute. You know, that's what it comes down to. He does a fantastic job uh, with his gap scheme stuff, and he really does. Um, they, their offensive linemen do a nice job of making sure they're where they're supposed to be, and the running backs are always good. And the quarterback does a good job of managing the game, too. You know, the kid can throw it. Um, play action stuff's always there. And then defensively, you know, they're, they're just going to line up and do what they do. And um, they disguise a little bit. But what I think what, what makes them so good is they just contain everything so well. And they force you uh, they force you to execute. There's not a whole lot you can do in terms of scheme and formations that are going to put them – they're not going to put themselves in a bad situation. Um, then you got Evangel, you know, they're new to the conference and, and all that. And, um, you know, for them to come in here and, and, and do what they did last year is great and everything. I kind of wish for our league, I wish they would have won a playoff game, yeah. but, yeah. uh, you know, that didn't happen. And so, you know, whoever our conference representatives are going to be this year between the two divisions, I hope that we can win one or two and, and uh, that always helps our credibility when it comes to national ratings and rankings and things like that. So, um, you know, going to Evangel, I, I, I played at Baker, so I'm familiar with Evangel. I coached at Lindenwood, so we used to play Evangel. When, and I was part of the staff there at Lindenwood when I remember they came into the heart of America. So, um, you know, really familiar with them. And, and they're going to be – they're going to be good. They're always going to be good. Um, so – you know, it's just a, it's just a matter of us being able to put together a game plan, get our best people on the field, and and um, having our guys mature a little bit. Well, Coach, I, I really appreciate your time today and taking us through. I, sure. I know a lot more about the program now, and I'm very thankful that you stopped by the summit. Coach Mike Gardner with Tabor as he's heading into season number 17 at the helm, and the Blue Jays getting ready for a new season 2024. Again, gets underway August 31st at home. Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us today. You bet. Thank you. Appreciate it.